clap? That's uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, it was a little weak. That's better. That's a better one. Now I got two Now claps. you got two claps. Hey, just line them both up. Call you two claps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my expectations for a recording session today, uh, I, I've used the Budapest Scoring Orchestra quite a few times actually for other projects and it's always kind of like a guerrilla recording technique where you kind of, you buy really, really small, short sessions and you just sort of record the important stuff. Um, and it's always, it blows me away what these musicians are able to do in such a short amount of time. Okay. 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 It's right now a forte piano. It's loud attack, drop to soft, and then grow again. Mm -hmm. And what I want it to is I want it to be like growing, growing, and then suddenly quiet, and then grow. I was actually hoping that we'd be able to get through quite a bit of music today, and I wrote out some extra cues for them, just little small segments from the film that I thought would really benefit from live musicians. Um, and I included it when I sent scores over to the studio just in case we had extra time. And we were actually able to get through all of that music today, which is crazy because the session is only 30 minutes long. And I mean, that's 30 minutes um, of talking between the studio, um, of giving instructions to musicians, and actually of playing. And they don't you know, just play each thing one time, they play it a couple times just to get the performance right, to get the sound right, to bring out the melodies. Um, and we were able to get through all of it today, which is really, really spectacular, actually. And they, um, they applauded at the end of the session because they love the music, which is always a really great feeling. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the beautiful music. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Clapping. Wow, that was great. That was a good one. You're better than me, man. <laughs> yeah. Something that's really important for us uh, with the Half Dam project is uh, production value. At every step of the process, we really try to maximize our ability to get uh, as high of uh, production value and quality to the film as possible. Uh, off of Jesse's recommendation, we went we decided to go ahead and work a little harder to find the money to record with the Budapest Orchestra. I'm 100% confident that the score is going to heighten the audience's emotional connection with the characters as they move through their trials and tribulations of the story. It was an amazing process and um, I think it was a good call. We've tried to make half that as impactful as possible. Initially sat down to talk about scoring Halfdan. We were imagining a score that was very intimate, very um, I don't want to say small, but very personal. The word that kept coming up was yearning, and so I was thinking of music that was very raw, um, very down to earth. And a lot of that actually carried through the score as it continued to develop. I'm surprised by how much of a journey the score went on. From, from a smaller beginning, we actually end up somewhere quite grand, somewhere um, it, larger than I imagined the score would ever be as the story sort of unfolds and opens up into the end of the film. And I just, I didn't expect for that to happen. I think we just sort of followed the music and the film where it led us and the story where it led us. Um, and so I think the biggest difference between what I expected and what we ended up with is we ended up with a score that was much bigger than I had imagined, a much more sweeping, um, and I'm very happy with that. So from the beginning, I had images and a feeling, like a gut feeling in mind and, and kind of experience, so to speak. Um, whenever I envisioned the film and as I was writing it and going through that whole development and creation process 
And I found a lot of music that was evocative of some of those feelings from the History Channel's Viking show. And so for a long time, we used that in the temp score. Um, and it was actually pretty challenging listening or watching it without the temp score because it, it had evoked the right feeling. And based on that emotional response to the music, it, it made it very hard to let go of that. So I initially came in to the scoring process with some apprehension. Um, now, I knew Jesse's talent was above and beyond what I had hoped for in the person scoring. Um, so that definitely reassured me. And I was very quickly uh, assured that it was going to be incredible, especially when he came up with the amazing theme suite and all of that. So um, when we actually got the final score on Hal Van, it was an experience I'll never forget because it felt like two and a half years of toil and passionate labor and all of a sudden there was just like a peace that settled on me because everything emotionally was landing the visuals were tight um and it just it felt like it was finally fusing together it felt like how dan and the music before had these moments where where things were disjointed um even with the the temp score that i love so much and then when we finally got in and tailored it the way jesse used the narrative to create music he, he really forged melodies and music from the narrative which absolutely inspired me and and i love it as a producer when it came to the score uh one of my main jobs or focus was the details a director is wanting a piece of music because he feels in his heart that at this moment, this is what I want the character to feel, and this is what is supposed to happen. Sometimes that feeling that the director specifically wants may not translate across different demographics. So one of my jobs is to look at that creative element and say, okay, how, how does this communicate to population A or population B? Going from a temp score to the real score. In the first place, why did we have the temp score? What was our goal? What was our mission? When we have the real score, are we fulfilling that mission? This process took a lot of notes, a lot of sitting down and analyzing what's happening with the music at different points, talking about intention. You know, it's, it's kind of like an overwatch position in a way to, to make sure that everything is in harmony uh, to create the end product.